Hello and welcome to the third and final part of this iOS map kit tutorial series. Today we are going to learn how to construct routes between our location and annotations on the map. This tutorial picks up where tutorial 2 left off, so if you haven't done tutorials 1 or tutorial 2, I suggest you take a look at those tutorials, those links are down below in the description. Also, if you found this tutorial series helpful, go ahead and subscribe to CodePro, go on, press that button, and uh, hit that notification bell so you can be updated for when the next tutorials go live. All right, let's begin. Okay, so back in the code here, we are in our viewcontroller.swift file, and hopefully this looks familiar to you from tutorials one and two. But the, to add directions, we want to add a couple of things first before we can implement the core functionality. Um, and in particular, we want to keep track of our annotations so that we can reference them later on. Now, we added them to the map here, but we're going to need to keep a collection of them as a property up top. So what I'm going to do is create a new array. And it's going to be a private var, and we'll just call it destinations. And the type is going to be mk point, uh, and actually point annotation, mk point annotation. And I'll go ahead and just initialize that to being empty. And uh, then we're going to need a actual route that's going to be optional at first until uh, a route has been computed and then this will have a value. So we'll also have a private var uh, current route and that's going to be a type of an MK route or a map kit route which is one of the uh, constructs or classes from the uh, map kit API. So once you have that, let's go back down here and we'll implement the ne next piece. Back over at the add annotations method, uh, in addition to adding our annotations to the map, we're going to also want to add them to the collection that we just made. So what we can do is uh, call destinations.append, and we'll append the apple park annotation, and we'll do the exact same thing for the Ortega park annotation here. So .append Ortega park annotation. Now right below our add annotations method, we're going to construct a new method. And we're going to name this uh, private func construct uh, route. And it's going to take in a user location, which will be of type CL location coordinate 2D. And this is going to be the place where we are going to compute uh, our, our route um, to whatever, whatever we want to go to. And um, the other thing we have to consider is where do we want to call construct route? There's actually a couple of different ways you can do this depending on what you're trying to implement in your app. Um, to keep things simple, I'm just going to throw it here. Um, this might not necessarily be the best spot, but again, it depends on your needs and for sake of example, um, this is kind of the simplest way to go about it. So I'm going to do construct route after we've zoomed to the latest locations, added annotations, and we have received the latest location of the user. So uh, what I will end up passing in here is latest location. And that'll start us off uh, with implementing the core pieces here. So let's go back to, oops, dot coordinate. There we go. So let's go back to our construct route method and start fleshing this out. We need to create a MK directions request. And a request will contain a source destination and like a final destination. And that's gonna be our starting point here. So we're gonna create a new variable, let directions request equal MK directions request. And then we need to go ahead and start assigning those values. So a directions request has a dot source available to it. And what we need to do is construct a MK map item for a place mark, which constructs an MK place mark. And we're going to use the coordinate for this uh, place mark for the map item. So in this instance, we'll be doing the user location dot, uh, just user location, because that already is a coordinate. So that's a source, that's where we're starting from. Um, obviously we need a destination, so where do we want to go to? Um, so dot destination equals an MK map item, and we'll just do that uh, place mark. And I think, uh, oops, yeah, make this a little bit easier by copy pasting it. Now instead of the user location here, because we want to go somewhere else, uh, I'm going to use the Apple Park uh, destination. 
And what I'm going to do here is just do destination zero because it's the first uh, item in the array that we added. Um, if you want to use Ortega Park, you can just switch the zero to one and uh, make sure you reference the dot coordinate property there so um, you don't get a compilation error. So now we've got our source, we've got our destinations set. Uh, there's a couple of other interesting things of note here. So if you do directions request dot request alternate routes, um, you can assign that to true. Uh, if uh, maybe one route doesn't work for whatever reason, you might get back another route uh, from the actual directions when we, when we build that piece. And another thing to note is uh, directions request has a transport type. So, and you can set that to a few different values here. There's type any, uh, automobile, transit, and walking. So for our purposes, since these two places are kind of not necessarily really close by, I'm going to use these by uh, automobile instead. Uh, so we've got our request built. The next thing we need to do is actually get the directions for this request. To construct directions, uh, we can create another variable and we'll just go let directions equals an MK directions for a request. And we'll inject in the directions request that we had built here. And um, <clears throat> what we want to do is actually calculate the directions. So we'll call directions dot calculate. And you'll see that it yields back a completion handler. Uh, the reason for that is it might take some time for the Apple servers to compute a direction and then spit that back uh, for their original request. Uh, so, you know, if, for example, maybe the Wi-Fi and cellular service aren't available, uh, then you might not get a response right away, or if it's connectivity issues, there could be issues where it comes back later. So we have to kind of handle that uh, when we get a response back here. And you'll see that both the directions response and the error are optional. So what we'll do here to complete this is uh, directions response. I'll we'll just call this uh, error. And uh, go ahead and start stubbing this piece out here. And uh, I'm going to also refer to weak self here since we're inside a closure. Uh, and we'll do first we're going to make sure that we can get a reference to the strong self. So guard let strong self equals self else return. I'm going to do all that in the same line here. And ideally this shouldn't be a problem, but just for memory purposes. Um, and so now we want to check the error. So uh, if let error let equals error, something went wrong. We'll just print that error.localized description here. Otherwise, uh, everything probably went OK. So um, we'll just do an else. Actually, we'll do an else if let. Else if uh, let response equals directions response. And our response.routes.count is greater than 0. And then we will actually assume, OK, everything went good. Now we can do what we need to do right here. Uh, so one of the first things we want to do is keep track of that route. So we had a property up above called, I believe, current route. So we'll do uh, using strong self dot current route equals our response dot routes. And I'm just going to grab the first one in here. Now keep in mind, uh, you could have more than one route. So you could have uh, multiple routes. So you might, this might not necessarily be the best way for the tutorial. It's simple enough, but you're, you're probably going to want to pay attention if there's more than one route that came back. Um, the next thing we need to do is add some information to the map for the routes. So we can grab a reference to strong self uh, dot map or our map view reference. And what we can do is we can add the uh, actual route to our map. And we'll do that by doing this. Response dot routes. We're going to use the first one that we selected. And we're going to look for a property called dot polyline. And I'll explain a little bit more of what this is uh, when we get to rendering the directions here. And the final thing we want to do is uh, add in or set the visible rect for where this route's going to be. So strong self dot map view again dot set visible rect or visible map rect and uh, we'll do that to the response dot routes zero, or the first one for us, uh, dot polyline and dot bounding map rect, or the, uh, the area or the rectangle that encompasses you know, the, the overlay or the, the route for where we're going. And animated, we'll go ahead and set that to true. So let's just go ahead and clean this up here, but that pretty much takes care of 
actually putting our route where we need to, uh, the next thing we need to implement to actually see the route is the actual rendering. Because if you were to just run this right now, you wouldn't see any lines being drawn because uh, nothing's actually rendering it to the map. And that's the next piece we need to implement so we can see a line from A to B. Now scroll on down to the extension that contains our map, uh, MK map view delegate here. And like I was saying, we need to actually implement the rendering so that the line is drawn from the source to the destination. So, and fortunately there's a method to help us with this. Um, if you start typing render for overlay, you'll get back a method here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And uh, this is a map view renderer for overlay and it returns an MK overlay renderer. And this is gonna be the piece that actually draws the routes on the map. So uh, the first thing we need to check for is obviously since this doesn't return an optional, uh, we, have, we have to handle the case where we didn't have a current route yet computed or assigned. So we can do that quite easily just by checking for ours. Guard let a current route equals current route else return. But don't just return, we need to return um, an MK overlay renderer. So I'm just going to return um, overlay renderer just a empty or basically just an initialized one with nothing done to it to cover that. Um, and now, so we have our current route, it's been computed, we need to draw it. So what we need to create is a polyline renderer. Uh, and, and I'll show you what that means in a second here. So we'll do let polyline renderer equals an MK polyline. And the polyline it's gonna take in is our current route dot polyline. And what we need to do here is return this back. And we can make a couple of customizations, uh, notably the color of the line. So if I wanna change the color, so let's just say dot stroke color equals orange, I can do UI color dot orange. And uh, if I wanna change the width of the line, I can simply do dot line width equals, let's just say for example, five. Um, I could configure that pretty much any which way I want to. And um, so, so this is the piece that does the drawing. If you look at the documentation here, the renderer strokes the line, uh, it does not fill it. So you can take a look at this class just by command clicking in. Um, if you wanna read a little bit more uh, about what, what happens here, the uh, inheritance hierarchy, so on and so forth. Uh, so right now we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and run our simulator and uh, look at the directions. And then I have simulators up and running here and I'm installing it for the first time so I have to give that location permissions. And look at that. So we have our line drawn here. Uh, here's our directions from uh, where we were at the Apple old Apple campus to get to the new Apple campus, Apple Park. I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit so we can see uh, that drawn. And let's let that, yeah, there we go. And we'll click in a little bit here and inspect that a little more. And you can see that it's getting us all the way there. And if we zoom in a little bit further, a little bit more, you can see that there's the highway route to go this way by car and to take us all the way to Apple's new spaceship campus. Now, there's one other uh, issue I want to address here, and that's regarding the app entitlements. Um, obviously, in a development environment like this, um, it doesn't really matter. But if you were gonna ship a production application, one thing you're gonna to need to remember to do is if you go into your project and go into the capability section here, you're gonna to wanna to go and turn on the maps. And uh, for routing, especially if you're doing directions, you're gonna to wanna to toggle on uh, all the ones that are of interest to you. Otherwise, um, your map kit directions might not work or Apple could reject your app. So just don't forget to toggle on uh, what you think you're going to need. And that wraps up the map kit tutorial series where we learned how to get the user location and show the user on the map, how to create custom annotations, and then how to route directions from the user to a particular annotation on the map. So I hope you found this tutorial series helpful. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button and go ahead and subscribe to CodePro. That button's right down there. And uh, share the video, uh, follow CodePro on social media, and uh, let me know in the comments section what tutorial you would like to see or what you would think you would learn from the most. So. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.